Hey everyone, I hope you guys are having a great day. Welcome back to another Web Dev Junkie video. I wanted to share with you a little example of how you should probably not do React and kind of show you how to refactor it the, the proper way in React. So one of my subscribers on Discord asked me a question and kind of showed me some code. And he showed me code that basically looked like this. There was a div which had a click listener on it, so on click. And it invoked the function like this. And he was passing E of target into the function. So notice that there's a toggle function declared up here, and that takes in an element. And so what he was doing was he was looking at the element and saying, does the element have a class called hide? And if it does, we can just go ahead and remove it. Otherwise, we could add it. Okay, so this is something that you don't want to do in React. So notice as I click this down here, you'll see, I need to zoom in a little bit. So pay attention to this. As I click it, you'll notice that the class is either added to it or removed from it. So this is not the way you want to use this type of functionality. You do not want to do this in React because the proper way to do this would be instead dynamically add the class to your JSX in general. So we should probably refactor this and use maybe a state variable to keep track of if it's on or not. And then we can add a class dynamically. There's different ways to do this. I'm just going to show you the easiest way without pulling in a third party library called class names. But let's just try this. So instead of calling a function of toggle and passing the target, probably what we want to do is let's just refactor it so that instead we don't pass it anything. Okay, that's a step in the right direction. So we need to figure out how to refactor this code to get to work. And instead, what we could do is basically pull in a state variable. So I can say const um, is open and set is open. And that's going to use a state variable that is defaulted to false. There's something wrong with my keyboard. It's not typing as I type. Let me make sure I auto import this. So we're moving the logic of if something is toggled or not into a state variable. And we want to dynamically add a class over here if the Boolean is set to true or not. Okay, so we're going to refactor this in just a second, but let's try to put this to good use on side of our divs. So what we could do is on the div itself, we could add class names, sorry, class name. And we could have this dynamically be added as a class if it's enabled. So I can just put curly braces here and I can interpolate the class name if it's defined. So what we could do is just say if is open is true using a ternary operator, we can say uh, blank, I guess. Otherwise, we want to say hide. This is one way you can do it. I would highly suggest bringing in this class names library. It seems like a lot of people use this in React where you can easily just pass in like an object like this where I can say like hide colon is open. But this is one way to do it. So now as we refresh and look at that element again, notice that hide is actually set onto here because is open is false right now. So if I were to go here and reset the state to true, notice that that hide class is no longer on the DOM element. So now for the second part is how do we actually dynamically toggle it? So instead of doing like lower level DOM manipulation, if you have the option to just use React and use JSX the way it's meant to be used. Really, all you want to do is just toggle that Boolean value, right? So if we refactor that code to basically just toggle the Boolean, so this takes the current state of Boolean, it negates it using this not operator. So if it's false, it becomes true. If it's true, it becomes false. And now as I click on this, notice that we get the same functionality, okay? So the main takeaway in this video is do not do lower level DOM manipulation, unless for some reason you're trying to implement something fancy in your UI, right? So sometimes you do need to actually target DOM elements and do stuff. But if that is the case, you probably want to use something called a React reference where you can do like ref is equal to ref. Um, you could pull in the ref here. I think it's like this, like that. Okay, something like that. And what that would allow you to do is you can actually say ref.current and then you can do your like class list dot add and then hide. Um, this is kind of out of the scope of the video. I'm not going to go into like how to use references, but if you wanted to actually reference the DOM element um, precisely, you could use that ref hook. All right, so that's all I got to share with you today. If you enjoyed watching this video, give me a thumbs up because it helps my channel grow. Also, if you have any suggestions of other ways you can do like dynamic classes, Again, I like using the class names library, but I believe there's other ways you can do this. 
And like always, if you're new to this channel, be sure to click that subscribe button because I'm going to be publishing other web development tutorials like this in the future, which can hopefully make you a better React developer. All right, have a good day. Happy coding.